and and candidates have a lot of apprehension that how to prepare for numerical so if you can just last few words about the numerical preparation which the aspirants would follow so i think uh, like practice is the key there so yeah. i uh, like for the account for me accounting was new so i uh, tried like practicing i practiced much more difficult numericals as well like even in the booklet if the, they were in the ca mm. booklet or elsewhere i could find some accountancy so i did much more difficult ratio and everything like i tried yeah. to do that so you can do that like gain an expertise Hello everyone uh, welcome to our channel anujindal.in so today we have with us mr mohit gupta who recently cleared sebi grade examination many many congratulations to mohit uh, so we'll be Thank having a uh, uh, brief interview about mohit so that other aspirants who may be preparing for sebi grade a 2023 uh, they may get benefited from the insights which mohit will provide us or his preparation strategy uh, what all uh his discipline his consistency what all did he uh, undergone over the period of time to you know achieve this milestone so we will having a great interactive session with mohit i hope you all people will enjoy it chaliye we'll start the interview uh, so mohit if you can just tell me about your background your education qualification okay uh, so i am a graduate in mechanical engineering from vimc university of science and technology it is in faridabad i graduated in 2017 and since then i was preparing for the civil services examination by upsc and uh, post 2020 like i reached the interview stage in 2020 in civil services i started preparing for other examinations like uh, banking examinations and regulatory bodies examinations and i reached till the rbi interview as well in 2021 and uh, like after november 2021 i started thinking very seriously about the sebi examination and i started studying from then about the exam okay. so uh, mohit was it your first attempt of sebi or did you gave any other previous attempt also i think i gave uh, one more attempt like uh, in 2018 i think uh, bef- uh, at that time also there was uh, the specialized subjects were not there in the phase 1 at yeah, least yeah. as far as i remember uh, but r- i was not very prepared for that exam and uh, i gave it very lightly at that point because i was much more focused on the upsc prep back then so i gave it much like this was my first serious attempt i would say and yes as you mentioned in 2018 the syllabus was entirely different it was entirely securities market so in some yes. sense we can say this was your first attempt as per the new syllabus you would reckon so that's yes. a great achievement uh, like acing the exam in the first attempt itself many many congratulations so uh, 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 so mohit uh, if you can just tell us uh, your preparation strategy uh, like phase for phase 1 and phase 2 like how did you allocated your time or like how did you manage your time and give time to each subject because there are six subjects in phase 2 paper 2 and phase 1 paper 2 yes okay uh, so uh, there are six subjects in the six core subjects are there of which accounts cost and management accounting and some portions of finance they were like completely alien to me i had never studied them uh, especially accounts and company law like uh, i had no idea and for accounts so i started with these subjects first because these were the biggest hurdles for me for finance economics i had some background in the upsc preparation so i could cover it from there and for management also i had some background with the rbi preparation so that was there so first of all i started with the accounts and i had no knowledge whatsoever about accounts i didn't know credit debit rules basic accounting entries nothing i know i have never i had never studied it and i had seen credit debit only in my <laughs> bank passbooks and so on. so now here uh, my brother he is um, like he's uh, in the final uh, stage of his company secretary examination so he referred me to uh, the accounting books so he referred me to the ncrts and also the the reference books i think they are by ts karewal uh, i yeah. think if i remember correctly so he referred to me those books 
i refer i uh, very b- briefly i tried to read those i understood the basic accounting concepts and so on but i needed like uh, some clarity on the rules of credit debit and the funda behind them and for that i refer to youtube videos so there are uh, some teachers uh, who stud like who in part teaching for the class 11th and 12th students very basic very clear concise i could understand it from there so i built my concept from there now following that there were accounting standards so what i found about accounting standards is it is basically followed on logic like there is some law in it and mostly a, a logic and if you understand the basic concept behind how credit debit entries are made how is how what are different types of accounting books you can do those so uh, first i refer to the ici material that is available on their website for that uh, then uh, i again for that uh, to make it a bit more concise i refer to uh, the youtube videos like for an explanation but i used to keep the ici material as a reference and solve some questions from there only to see if i can do that so that was my strategy with accounting paper and then uh, if i move on forward to the finance paper so fi- in finance uh, there are many topics like which are uh, the part of the gs3 or economy syllabus in the upsc uh, examination inflation financial and basic over- overall framework is there in the dax syllabus but uh, some things like uh, they are needed very uh, deeply for the sebi examination so i refer to the nism booklet for that uh, it is uh, the i think i am not able to remember the exact uh, the course securities market foundation workbook so i refer to uh, that booklet and i read it and i i wanted to be like sure about all the concepts i know about depositories and everything uh, to the core so that i did from there and other concepts like the time value of money or bonds or a different type of numerical concepts and others uh, for them i had some like preparation from the rbi from the prasanna chandra book but i also refer to some notes that were available or uh, some youtube videos again for those if i wasn't able to understand a particular topic uh, then coming to the company law so for company law again like my brother company secretary he referred me to uh, where he studied from like it is the foundation level is only needed for the cacs examinations so he referred me uh, to the teach like to the videos or the coaching material that he was referring to i watched those i made my notes from that i for the first time it was like i watched it at full uh giving it full time understanding different things because it is not just about remembering the fact it is also about understanding the things like equity share preferences ipo everything is can be a bit confusing so i used to discuss it with him and he used to solve some doubts regarding that and uh, but basically i watched the videos i made the notes and I'll, uh, after that i just referred to those notes like i referred to those notes five six times i tried to remember the articles that provisions like for instance penalties and all uh, i had read them in a times that they sort of got in brain like i had an idea i could attempt the questions from them so company law i did like that uh, then we have the economics uh, part now uh, the economic and economics part was uh, like in the phase one i went uh, with an idea that okay i have studied economy for the upsc syllabus and that will do like there will be one two technical questions regarding philips curve and all uh, but i can manage those and i gained some superficial understanding about say newer topics like islm curve from uh, online but uh, like it was an eye opener that uh, economy is not the same as that like it is very technical in nature in sebi examination also the level of the paper was also significantly higher than previous exam so i focused on the economy part in the phase two, uh, preparation to the phase 2 so for that uh, i knew the basic framework but i had to know about the exact technical details like what classical model is what keynesian model is what does islm curve um, show and what does what is its use what is its implication everything i had to do in detail so for that again i refer to youtube videos like uh, there's a there are youtube videos uh, i would search the concept and then see the youtube video and i could uh, add up on that now that worked uh, well because like i had the b- basic knowledge behind it basic concept behind it so i just needed some additions for the technicalities so in the economy i did that uh, cost and management accounting uh for the cost and management accounting there are many concepts that were part of the mechanical engineering syllabus as well so i had some basic introduction because these thing happen in industry and uh, in the operation research so some things some concepts were taught so i had some sort of familiarity with that 
for instance economic order quantity marginal costing and some of these questions there were there but uh, so uh, for that what i did was i again refer to the ici material the, that is available on the website for cost and management accounting i downloaded that and topic wise i uh, used the syllabus and um, only difficult topics in the uh, cost and management accounting that i found was personally was the uh, variances in the standard cost mm-hmm. i wasn't able to understand those directly from the book so for them again i refer to youtube videos to get the concept behind them and a way to remember the formulas more easily so that i did so i think i covered the six subjects there yeah yeah i think it's finance something, it's yeah, finance management uh, management. Uh, management, management is left sorry Yeah. Yes. So for management uh, in the RBI, I had done. So the topics are broadly similar. Like RBI, mm-hmm. I think has something, uh, some extra topics, extra but uh, the basic is same. Yes. So for that, I had referred to the organizational behavior book by Stephen P. Robbins and Timothy A. Judge at that time, and uh, I had highlighted that and noted that, and so on. like I had, uh, if I could uh, look at the book again, I could in, uh, complete it in a shortly short period of time. So I used. that book again for the cv examination and moreover i practiced like uh, some questions um, because uh, the questions were a bit tricky in the phase 1 as well and phase 2 was also very tricky about the language so i just uh, tried to follow the logic uh, behind what is written and uh, i tried to solve the questions from there yeah. yes so one thing which mohit i would like to tell the viewers that he mentioned something about companies act that it is not only about memorizing the sections or the penalties rather he firstly focused on understanding the concept like what is preference share what is ipo what is book building method so that is very essential because we fall into this this trap that only remembering the facts in the company that would do but that would not do ultimately because the questions are not that straight forward also and yes and yes economics part also which mohit mentioned because in upsc or in rbi the focus is on indian economy but they are also asking questions from macroeconomics and microeconomics and this i found very you know uh, inspiring or i would say very motivating that uh, mohit referred to you know basics of economics maybe from youtube maybe from textbooks so that is very essential because economics as i was teaching also on youtube i was uh, coming into that conclusion that economics is a weaker part of most of the aspirants and especially the micro and the macro part so uh, this is one thing which yes. we need to focus upon especially if we are from non commerce or non economics background okay mohit so yes. that was explained in much detail by mohit i hope that would help the aspirants a lot so mohit i would like to know that uh, uh, did you refer to any specific material of any institute or you just refer to random sources as you just mentioned and how so, difficult uh, yes and how difficult was it for you to study from different sources because as you are telling you are also preparing for rbi you are also preparing for civil services so uh, how did you managed or allocated your time between these three examinations i would also like to know that so i think while like preparing for any examination the first thing is to have the sources like it is very important because otherwise one would get confused if yeah. you follow try to follow 10 different sources and so on yeah. so for me the most alien subjects were companies law and accountancy so for them i refer to my brother's advice like he had some he give, gave me very concise sources i refer to those and i followed those uh, did that for some topics like i had to find some sources uh, for instance if accounting standard for inventory was not available in my source so i had to search for that and i used that video so that did take time in accounts uh, per se because everything was not available in one structured manner but for company law i found a single structured source Uh, in that respect similarly for cost and management accounting i just followed the icai booklets like uh, for only variances i had to look elsewhere but otherwise icai booklets similarly for management only one book organizational behavior i followed that only and uh, lastly like uh, for economics as i told like i had the basic uh, concept with me i just had to follow it up with the so that for those i also for i found a particular like very good source and i used that one so that was sufficient for me yes and uh, like uh, how did you allocate your time since you were preparing for only examinations but you were preparing for multiple examinations so you must have to allocate time for you civil services and between sebi and rbi so what was your uh, schedule of the day 
okay uh, so regarding that what uh, what was there was like i was uh, maybe falsely very hopeful about my result in either of the examination it is a feeling when you have like i had the rpi interview as well as civil services interview in 21 and i was hopeful like at least one would i would clear but i didn't clear both of them in like it was uh, in september that both the results came out so after that my immediate priority was to uh, get a job like it was my immediate priority so i started preparing for the banking examinations as well and i wanted to uh, get sure uh, like hold of something by october november december i wanted to be in that process so i put the upsc on back burner for that then so for upsc what i used to do was like i if i woke up in the morning i'll read the newspaper i'll be in touch with that my optional subject was political science so i like i kept the, those notes notes updated but i wasn't doing much more uh, back then because i had to work on my quantitative aptitude reasoning i was focusing much more on these subjects yeah. so i gave the banking examinations and i like i was uh, i cleared the sbi po as well uh, that year so Uh, i was giving those examinations and then uh, like when sebi notified i was uh, aware that sebi might come and i was not satisfied like with just the banking so i had it in mind that i have to ultimately go to the regulatory examinations because i had studied a lot uh, like i wanted to put it to good use there so i there were like uh, there was an uh, there was uh, some it was expected that sebi would come out with its notification so i in november uh, i started preparing but it was not like i was giving the full day because i was mainly preparing for the uh, quantitative and reasoning aptitude for the banking examinations but i was giving 2 3 hours like daily to the uh, sebi uh, concepts the accountancy company you know, mainly these, these two subjects then when the notification came i think in february or jan i am don't remember but when the notification came i switched full time to uh, sebi because i had already also progressed in the sbi exam uh, sbi also i think the uh, the second stage happened in january so i was comfortable there so i fully focused on sebi for the phase one and uh, Uh, i gained sufficient confidence that like uh, i i covered all the concepts i gave full like i had a friend with whom i was working we were keeping targets uh, every daily targets mm-hmm. we were working like as long as we could and we were totally focused on sebi and uh, then i like cleared the phase 1 examination yeah. so in between there was one month and again like uh i had some thing going on regarding the upsc so i was a bit diverted again like after the phase 1 i got a bit diverted but then when the result came i it again struck me like it is it is very important to do this right now so again i shifted uh, fully to the sebi and did uh, whatever lacuna is that i had so it was a bit of like shifting here and there but uh, so but it was never like uh, away from the back of my mind i was always oh. doing like if yeah. two days i didn't do then okay i'll make it a point that i okay i should do this so it was uh, like that yeah. juggling so, a lot of things now. yeah but yes. uh, apart from juggling what i am able to you know uh, comprehend from what you have told is that uh, your uh, study was a bit consistent i would say because you started small you started for 2 3 hours a day but still you were consistent enough and you switched full time so this is important that it's not that you have to give 8 or 10 hours a day you know studying the same yes. uh, same for same exam but you have to be consistent that is more important and one thing more i like appreciate about mohit is that i also mentioned in one of my videos that if you are preparing yourself uh, it's better to study in a group because you get a constant push and motivation from your friends who set daily targets so this is i would say it, it would be very helpful for all the viewers out there who are planning to a uh, prepare on their own that if you can form a study group sort of a thing where you will get daily targets you will give daily t- targets to your other colleagues and friends that will i think help a lot and as you have live example of mohit also that these things work actually we take them very lightly sometimes but yes these things are these basic things are important in life it's not any rocket science that yes. you have to follow that was a really uh, i would say nice uh, and that would uh, give a good insight to our viewers so okay so that was okay, regarding uh, the, i like uh, to yeah. add one thing on that yeah, like yeah. for the time management thing when uh, one reads like for the first time for like for the first time when i was reading the company law it was very easy to give long times 
like i could maybe 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours i could give like it, it was theoretically or in practically also possible that i could give that much time because when you are uh, like i was not uh, trying to remember anything i was just trying to understand i was going with the flow uh, whatever uh, the whatever it is being taught or whatever i am ready so that is very like in initial time okay. but when it is very intensively about uh, memorizing then it becomes a bit difficult to give longer times because then it is important to give a qualitative time so for that for instance if you had a two hour session of just like revising and revising and revising the company load then it becomes like you can get exhausted so that is there is a difference in uh, that as well that yeah. is yeah that that that's a good point boy so uh, i would like to ask one thing more that did you get enough time for revision or and if yes so what was your revision strategy because i found that uh we as uh, aspirants or as candidates we are not able, we do not revise in a proper manner actually there should be a good strategy for revision as well so if you could share your revision strategy something like that okay yes so the revision strategy was totally like dependent on my notes so because i was referring to the books if i refer to the books again and again it would be possible a revision like it will be very exhausting yeah. Yeah. so i made notes uh most importantly like for company law i had notes i could revise them again and again so i could revise them five to six times i could revise them a day before phase one i could revise them a day before phase two as well similarly for accounts some things that were not like in my domain so initially i started to write those things for instance yeah. if i started like as2 inventory so i made a brief note on what uh, which which thing comes because i was not like very uh, sure on how how things are dealt in accounting mm -hmm. so i used to write okay this will come on credit side this will come on debit side this is the rule you have to follow this technique uh, you don't follow this technique similarly for depreciation and stuff so i tried to make those notes but ultimately like for the later topics it wasn't uh, as much required so i highlighted and annotated on the material itself but it was very important to revise because you tend to get uh even if you have the concepts clear like uh if you are not in practice it becomes difficult to recall and yeah. in the actual examination i found the time was like because the questions were a bit complex they were not direct also maybe they were a bit lengthy to read yeah. this yeah. so it was a time constraint situation and recall value is uh, like it matters a lot if yeah. you have read company law and you do not recall mm -hmm. it it doesn't matter uh -huh. like so uh, for that revision was very key yeah. i depended on the notes yeah. and i make like notes in uh, online on my laptop only because I, mostly i'm reading from there so uh -huh. those i used so like you were revised you revised at the end after completing the syllabus or you were revising side by side maybe on a daily basis or maybe on a weekly basis were you doing that or only at the end no no i was revising like side by side also for instance if i did the first the third chapter of the company law then i would revise it and understand yeah. because these are the yeah. basics only when you can make sense yeah. of the others yeah. everything was interlinked so yeah. that i needed yes so that's very important like in one of my sessions also i told about active revision so if you are revising side by side that also plays a good role because sometimes we tend to revise only at the end but if you are revising with the after completing a chapter that i think also helps a lot as you can uh, hear as mohit is saying so mohit you just mentioned uh, a few minutes back that you refer to nism material so that but that material is very yes. good i know that so like did you did any short term course of nism or ncfm no no and i was just like i found out from a, uh, a recent top like previous year's top strategy that an sm booklet is good for okay. this okay that's good enough so uh, mohit uh, so like uh, i would not jump to interview part uh, because that's one thing that it's, the information is not very readily available about interview and uh, i think aspirants are very willing to hear from the you know achievers about the interview questions or the interview strategy this is one thing which is very hard to okay. find on on the internet so if you can just tell me your interview strategy uh, the sources which you must have referred to and uh, and literally uh, the interview questions which you were being asked okay uh, so i had given like two interviews a year before and i failed both of them so i was not happy uh, with the interview performance in the actual situation i would give mock interviews 
uh, they went well but in the actual uh, interview something used to happen every time so first of first weakness of uh, like i noted uh, what were my weaknesses because i had that experience so one of the first one was that uh, i wanted to be very sure about the technical aspects like the course labels that is there so i revised that again especially the nism booklet because whatever i could gather from the transcripts they were asking very basic things like structure of a mutual fund or depositories what are custodians and everything so these questions were a bit tricky for instance if you couldn't answer a depository then the confidence would tank immediately in the interview and it would be a very bad impression so that and there was a possibility because even in the examination they were like you were not focusing on them too much but here uh, i focused on them i learned the uh, sebi preamble i learned uh, all of these things like i was conceptually clear going into the interview this was one thing uh secondly i refer to the uh, transcripts so in the transcripts what i could find was like major focus was on hr questions so this was something unique like they were mostly focusing on hr questions and even in my actual interview they mo mostly focused on hr questions so for hr questions uh, again i have a bit of a weakness that i like if it is usually recommended to be very positive very motivating but sometimes sometimes i feel it is also necessary to be a bit real like you need to be authentic also so uh, the finding that balance is a bit uh, tricky like for me in the actual interview like so for that i wrote down the questions like the introduction strengths weakness uh why sebi and uh, also one of the most important was because i had a huge gap like after my graduation so i knew that that would be asked so for that i had the uh, answer like the actual answer i didn't make up anything like i was preparing for the civil services and i told them about it so that actually also happened in the interview so i prepared uh, like that first the technical part as well as the hr part also in the interview like mock interview that i gave to uh, anujindal the panel that was there so uh, in that also like i i fumbled a bit on the hr question and i got that feedback that i need to improve on the hr question so i was focused on that now uh, coming to the actual interview like um, so the i knew the basic protocol like it is very important to give a physical mock if you have never given an interview of like this uh, stage before for instance how to enter the room how to greet and everything it can be a bit too much but uh, because i had the experience of so that basic protocol i knew so uh, knocking in smiling as greeting everyone and sitting on that i could so uh, my first question was uh, like the panel uh, tried to grill me like my even before i could sit down the chairman uh, asked me are you from upsc <laughs> like he could see my bio data and he was uh -huh. so it was it was a rough start from the beginning and i was grilled like uh what is uh, like my journey they yeah. told that you are from engineering background then you were went for the ups your optional was political science and now you are coming into the finance what is this journey like how did you do that so that was the question then uh, so something around that only was like being asked for like 5 7 minutes then the other member also started asking like which department would you like to work in what would say we get from you why should say be uh, hire you mm -hmm. rather than another person so what would you give and uh, even the third member again like uh, what was your motivation behind upsc and what would uh, how would that translate into say like how would that motivation for like i told like i wanted to be in public service and that so how would that translate to say because say be such a specialized so these types of uh, questions were there and uh, in the actual interview like i won't lie but i got like the rough start that i had i got a bit uh, fumbled there but uh, one main thing that i had realized from my earlier interviews was that if like for instance i couldn't answer one question or i couldn't give a very good answer yeah. sometimes i go down like during the mm. interview mm. my voice becomes low confidence becomes low and mm. even if i'm giving good answers later on it doesn't matter because the energy has gone down yeah. so yeah. i try to maintain that this time and fortunately the last member asked me the uh, technical questions based on inflation as a like current topic what are the monetary responses fiscal responses international impacts and everything so this was my interview it like coming out of the interview i had a very mixed feeling like because the panel grilled me in the first half so yeah. i didn't know if it went well or it went bad but i knew that like 
I maintained the confidence at least till the end. In the end, mm-hmm. I could answer the questions very clearly, concisely, and I was in. I had that presence of mind. So that was the only conclusion that I could take. But it was a bit tricky. Ah, uh, so. But one thing I would like to repeat, as Mohit said, that he prepared well for the interview. That is one thing I would say yes. that uh, we have sufficient time, but we take it for granted that interview is to be done. So, like specifically, he mentioned he prepared for HR questions, and that is very very essential because you know technically we are studying, we know concepts, we cleared phase one, we cleared phase two, so we have some good idea about the technical aspects. But HR is one thing where we have to prepare. Like Mohit mentioned that he jotted down certain questions, their answers. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, sharing or just uh, speaking those answers to maybe to your friend, to your father, to your mother, or maybe in front of a mirror that helps a lot. So that was one thing I think would have helped Mohit a lot, and that other aspirants could also follow. And one thing more, I would say that Mohit uh, did was that he. studied sebi preamble he studied about the organization see whenever you go for any interview be it a corporate interview be it a government interview you should be well uh, well versed with the organization in which you are going because they expect certain amount of knowledge from your side that if you are going to serve in an organization at least uh, you should have some basic knowledge about its structure its working its preamble its vision its mission so that was very i would say uh, you know maybe from his past experience mohit has been preparing for upsc he gave upsc interview so that thing also helped but uh, uh, as a you know aspirant it is better to learn from others so like you can learn a lot from uh, mohit's uh, preparation for interview especially so i think that uh, that would have added a lot of value to all the viewers out there so in the last i would like to say that if mohit if you have some final words uh, uh, for the aspirants out there if you can just give some final advice some final words of uh, uh you know motivation encouragement okay because people are very very apprehensive that exam is difficult or we won't get enough time or whatever may there are different concerns of working aspirants and non working aspirants so just uh, some final few words more you can so uh, like i can give advice to uh, aspirants like me like who had a upsc background maybe a gap year and so so i had seen this ab notification the earlier year as well when it came with the changed syllabus and yes i was also like intimidated intimidated about, about it like who will remember company law and accounts it was because if you don't have the background it can be intimidating and it can be like it's uh, not my cup of tea like i skipped it that year so okay it is not an examination that you can give uh, without uh, forethought planning or like preparation you have to plan for it if you want to seriously give it then you have to take some time before the notification come comes out if it is not your background okay. this is the, the uh, one thing secondly if you had been an upsc aspirant like if you couldn't clear that now that knowledge will surely help here like i it helped me immensely means set several subjects like economics finance and general understanding was there you also uh, get a certain reading ability understanding ability because you have a wide exposure so uh, that always helps like this is there uh, finally if anyone who is giving the examination like the number of vacancies are so low that it becomes very competitive it becomes very difficult like i won't lie so it is difficult to believe that you will clear this uh, when seeing the notification even if you are prepared but what i like my goal was to take it stage by stage so i gave the phase one i wanted to be confident that i would clear the minimum cut off because that is a very big help that they have given a clear cut off that if you score 40% or 30% you will clear so it is not as uncertain like the phase one can uh, become uh, very easy if you prepare for it it is based on that phase 2 is uh, phase in phase 2 competition comes in phase 2 you have to be very ex- like well prepared you have to cover each aspect of the topic you have to not leave anything and uh, like if you have to prepare it very holistically you shouldn't leave anything uh, in that so for instance if the phase 2 of the previous year if we compare it to that the phase 2 this time was very different like it was much more technical so if someone went into phase 2 thinking about that then that would work so for me i 
I was expecting like after phase one because phase one was, was also a bit difficult. So I was expecting that phase two will be difficult and I wanted to be like very sure of everything. So I did company law. Even if I missed some things in phase one, I completed them. In economics, I realized that I had made a mistake in phase one. I did that. So uh, one has to be very sure like in phase two, you have to give your absolute best performance. And after that, like uh, taking that stage and I was very happy with clearing phase two itself. Like <laughs> for me, uh, reaching till the interview stage of such an alien examination like uh, an entirely different syllabus it was a big achievement for me and like uh, clearing the whole examination it's a cherry on the top like it's it's the final vindication okay i did something because then only it, it means anything but even uh, reaching till the interview stage well, like, was like a big thing for me i think till the interview stage if you prepare well if you plan it well i think it is in your hands but uh, maybe after that it uh, it gets the competitive part the luck part or the uncertainties start to kick in but so th that is the motivation that you should uh, be uh, like you should take it stage by stage you should believe in yourself take a leap of faith do everything that is there in the syllabus and only then maybe uh, magic happens so i think yeah. with that one thing was skipped which came to my mind recently that uh, how did you prepare for the numericals? Because numericals was, was one thing which was there. I think 20% questions were from numericals in phase two. And uh, and candidates have a lot of apprehension that how to prepare for numericals. So if you can just last few words about the numerical preparation, which the aspirants would follow. So I think uh, like practice is the key there. So yeah. I uh, like for the account for me, accounting was new. So I uh, tried like practicing. I practiced much more difficult numericals as well. Like even in the booklet, if, the, if they were in the CA mm -hmm. booklet or elsewhere, I could find some accountancy. So I did much more difficult ratio and everything. Like I tried to do that. So you can do that, like gain an expertise to try to like even in, in the examination, I found that the logic was not like very difficult for the numericals they were a bit lengthy it was uh, li like you had to navigate the language and the data but the logic was very simple if you had the logic you could do that but it would become tricky if the uh, if you're not able to recall in time because the time was very limited so mm -hmm. for that i think practicing more difficult numericals than are actually asked that can help uh, that maybe help me practice is the key there so oh, thank you very much, Mohit. Uh, with that, I think uh, we can uh, conclude our interview. So yes, uh, like uh, a final few words from my side for the aspirants out there that uh, see, even if you are from non-commerce background, even if you, uh, you know, preparing for UPSC or RBI and the exam was, if the exam is alien to you, still also you can clear the examination provided that, uh, you know, you do the requisite hard work and uh, be consistent as I can see in Mohit's preparation that he was consistent is and he was managing his time very well so that's the key here manage your time and manage your focus i think uh, that's the key to yes Mohit success and i think that can uh, help others also uh, and i hope uh, you viewers out there will be taking a lot of insights and key points uh, from this interview okay guys so thank you very much thank you Mohit, for sparing your valuable thank time I thank hope, you sir uh, thank uh, you yes i hope your uh, words uh, your strategies would help our aspirants a lot. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank you.